week's episode of Berserk was a vile, disgusting blood orgy filled to the brim with giant goat-headed demons, a shimmering skeleton knight, and lots and lots of sex. This week's episode of Berserk was, dare I say it, disturbing, and that's saying a lot for this show, because Berserk in general is pretty sick and twisted, but this episode right here brought together two of the most disgusting things about the series. Rape scenes and demons, and they just love combining these two things together. What I will say is, I did like this episode for a number of reasons. One, I like the fact that there's a lot of different things going on and a lot of characters to get attached to, despite the fact that Guts is indeed the main character. He's barely in this episode at all. He just got done kicking the ass out of all of those wheel demons when he's suddenly confronted by the mysterious and enigmatic Skull Knight who is without a doubt my favorite character from the series. I love the way they make him look in the series. I especially love the look of his armor, how shimmering and silver it looks. Not to mention he has this like weird ethereal green aura that appears around him at all times, and it just makes him seem so ghostly wise and badass. I love the Skull Knight. Basically, he's always there to warn Guts about some serious shit going down, and apparently there's going to be another event like the Eclipse that's going to be happening very soon. And of course, Guts wants to get to the bottom of this so that he can find Casca. Isidro is also following in tow, but he's having a really tough time in keeping up with Guts, who seems to have an infinite amount of energy as he just runs across the landscape. And you have to consider he's wearing a lot of armor and is also carrying that big-ass sword. Another subplot of the episode involves the Holy Sea, or the Holy Iron Chain Knights, with the character of Farnese and Serpico, and also getting to see what Mosgus and his torturers do on their day off. Mosgus, like I said, is very dedicated to his religion, so much so that every single morning he prostrates himself before God by slamming his head into the ground. We also get to learn that his torturers really aren't as bad as they make themselves out to be. I mean, don't get me wrong, they're freaking disgusting and monstrous characters. There's this great scene where they go to visit Mosgus and his torturers, and two of the dwarf guys are just hanging out in the sunlight, petting some birds, which paints them in a much different light. Then you have that one character who's wearing that bird mask in the full costume. The reason that he actually wears that is because he has this rare disease where if he goes out into the sunlight, his body is going to start to burn up and these nasty little boils start to pop up all over his body. So essentially, all of the torturers of Mosgus are like these monstrous looking people who are the outcasts of society and they were picked up by Mosgus to be his personal torturers. Interestingly enough, they don't really even seem to like their job as being torturers, even the guy who wears the bird mask, but he is proud of his work and to be a part of such a big organization along with Mosgus. Not to mention, this is all just fucking with Farnese's head. She doesn't know whether to believe anything about her religion anymore with all the crazy shit that's been going on. She doesn't want to give in to temptation, but it's seeming to be harder for her every single day. Not to mention, we get to see some flashbacks of her past, of burning people, at the stake, presumably her family, even the character of Serpico, who watched his mother get burned alive just three years prior. It's pretty fucked up shit, but it manages to get even more fucked up, because that's when we finally go to the next subplot of the episode with the character of Nina, who is that one girl who's working directly under Luca, the queen of the prostitutes, so to speak. And Nina has this relationship with this other weird character by the name of Joachim or Joachim. I'm not really sure how to pronounce his name. But she invites him out to this river and they go to this secret underground cult. This heretical cult, which is run by this guy known as the Great Goathead, which is this demonic looking dude with a giant goat for a head and a snake for a dick. And I'm not, like, making a joke about what his dick looks like. It is quite literally a snake that will bite you. It has freaking teeth. So Nina and her friend go down to this cult, which is having this big pagan party where all of these people are just eating human soup and fucking each other. It's disturbing to say the freaking least. Not to mention that her friend Joachim actually has to go to Great Goathead, kiss him on the chest, and then kiss his dick. Which is a snake, by the way. And I'm not even counting all the disgusting sex scenes which take place in this episode. Honestly, it's just a whirlwind of disgusting things being thrown at you. And, you know, for people who don't read the Berserk manga, this is going to be one of those moments that might actually turn you off. Because it is, frankly, pretty damn disgusting. Especially because that one guy realizes 
wait a minute, I don't want to be in this demon cult and eat human soup anymore, so they decide to just toss him off the edge of a cliff. Somehow this dude is able to survive falling off a cliff and into a river, being completely naked by the way, and he ends up getting saved by this weird demon with big eyes. This is something that's been teased in the last couple of episodes, and it's something that will come to the forefront as we get closer to the end of this arc right here. But Luca actually ends up finding Nina and quite literally spanks her to bring her back to her senses. And another th scene that's just frankly just weird. I honestly don't know how to feel about it. And then you have Casca, who unfortunately has been following Luca and Nina to this place, and when she arrives, she gets unbandaged, and all these creepy fuckers start to rape her, which of course starts to mess with her mind a little bit, because of course she's reminded of the time she was raped when she was uh, attacked during the eclipse, and then all of a sudden, these guys start getting possessed by all of these demons, transforming into these creatures, and biting each other's faces off, and luckily Casca is saved by that one mysterious fetus-looking demon, and we're going to get into that in a couple more episodes. For those who don't know what it is, I don't want to spoil it quite yet, but you can probably make some pretty clear speculation as to what sort of connection this thing actually has to Guts and to Casca, and why it continuously seems to protect them from other demonic entities, despite the fact that it itself is some sort of weird, creepy, monster-type thing. But luckily, Casca is safe, and Guts has almost arrived as well, so you know the blood's about to fly. So what's the rundown on this week's episode of Berserk? If I could describe this episode in one word, it would be uncomfortable. That's the way I felt watching the entire episode. I was really creeped out when I was reading this in the manga for the very first time. A lot of that having to do with the fact that when you read a manga, you tend to take your time with it a little more slower, so everything in this episode just comes at you full force, and they shove it all down your throat and in your face, and you're just like, what the fuck is going on? Why are all these people having this disgusting orgy? Why does this guy have a goat head. Why is his dick a snake? It's just so much weird shit to take in all at once. And of course, there was a little bit of censorship this week, which just added to the overall just weird and fucked up nature of this episode. That being said, it is definitely demonstrating the dark paths that Berserk can go into. And really, this is just child's play for the Berserk series. It still manages to go into even more disturbing territory than this, and that's saying a freaking lot. I'm not exactly a big fan of Nina and her whole side story and everything. I mean, I think Luca's an okay and interesting character. I would just much rather follow Guts or the Holy See. That being said, their story is interesting and is going to tie directly into all of the events which are coming up in the Tower of Conviction arc. I loved seeing the return of Skull Knight. I just think he's such a great looking character. He's so mysterious, even in the manga version. We don't know jack shit really about this character, aside from the fact that he's badass, he hunts down his demons, and he does it with a lot of damn style. He looks just as cool, if not cooler, than he did in the Berserk movie trilogy. And I'm really glad that they're incorporating this character. For some odd reason, in the back of my mind, I was fearing that they were somehow going to cut him from this anime version. When I saw him from the pre preview in last week's episode, I got really excited, and he doesn't even, like, do anything in this episode aside from just sit around on his really kick-ass looking horse, but damn, does he just bleed atmosphere. I love the Skull Knight. He's such a cool character. I like how little by little they're starting to bring some development to them, especially the character of Serpico, who rarely even talks about his past all that much for her, so for him to actually bring up the fact that his mother was burned at the stake years prior, like, that's a pretty big event for this episode right here. Not to mention getting to see the growing distance between between Farnese and her religion, getting to see how dark it really is. People, even in the Holy Iron Chain Knights, are questioning some of the things that they're doing, and they should be questioning them because everything they're doing is beyond fucked up. And that's what this episode was right here. It was fucked up, it was uncomfortable, it was disturbing, and it might just be the episode for you if you're a sick and twisted bastard, or if you're a fan of the Berserk franchise. So check it out, Berserk fans. Despite the fact that this episode had some ghastly imagery, it was still a pretty damn good episode of Berserk, and it's doing a pretty good job of adapting this arc. So I'm going to give this episode right here a four out of five. I still think they're taking some animation shortcuts, and it is starting to become a little more pleasing to the eye, but there are still just a few moments in the series where the characters just look like marionettes. They look like puppets. They look 
like Muppets. Yes, that's exactly what they look like. So it's not a perfectly animated series, but it's doing a pretty good job of adapting this arc of Berserk, so I gotta give it some credit for that, and it's got a lot of atmosphere behind it. And I can't wait to see some more of the crazy action as Guts comes in and starts to kick some ass. So check it out, Berserk fans. You might see something you like. But if any of you did watch this week's episode of Berserk, make sure to tell me what you thought about it in the comments section below. Did you have a favorite scene from this episode? Was there anything that particularly disturbed you about this one? What do you think about the character of the Skull Knight? And what do you want to see from the rest of the Tower Conviction arc of Berserk and the rest of this brand new anime iteration and beyond? Thank you guys for watching this review. I cannot thank you enough for that. If you would like to help support Super Kami Guru 9000, one of the best ways to do it is to simply smash that like button on this video. I want to get hundreds of likes on this video. It's the best way for people to actually see our content. Make sure to subscribe, leave comments, and share it with all of your friends. Thank you guys again for watching. And as always, stay dandy, baby.